Hi all, I am Trifon Gavriel, also known as King's Crusher. I am doing a course on crushing the king for Remote Chess Academy. So I have a few lessons that I'm going to show you, and I'm going to do a conclusions and summary at the end. Now, crushing the king is to me a great skill to have. And traditionally in middle game books, there's a list of elements which might not be completely relevant to the attacking skill set uh, needed for crushing the opponent's king. I like to list the elements actually as the attacking player's friends. I think that's an interesting idea. And so I've created a friends list and categorized it. But uh, I'm not going to go through the whole list now. We're going to go into concrete examples. So the first uh, lesson basically is getting an attacking position out of the opening. So an attacking player will strive to create the relevant resources and trap cards from the opening. Now one classic iconic game example is Morphe's Opera game which I'm going to show you now to show you some of the attacking player's friends with this iconic game, the Morphe Opera game, for those that don't know. Morphe was playing against two opponents, and Morphe was keen to watch the opera. He wanted to try and finish them off quickly. So he needed a good, quick attack against their king. It started with e4. Morphe played e4. Then we had e5, knight f3 d6, d4, bishop g4. They were trying to avoid losing a pawn with this move. And here now, after d takes e5, the idea of not losing a pawn was bishop takes f3. But they've given up an important light square bishop. And if you look at this position, this shows actually already one of the attacking friends that I've listed and classified. I'll give you the full comprehensive list as a separate uh, resource for this course so you can see the full comprehensive list. But basically, for me, that I'd like to highlight in this position, the attacking player's friend is having a bishop that there's no counterpart. This bishop has no counterpart in the black position. There's, yes, there's a dark square bishop, but there's no light square bishop. So it's a bishop without a counterpart. And that can cause huge damage to the opponent's king position because it's extra force added to the light squares. If you've got a bishop that there's no counterpart, you've really got that trump card, so to speak, against the opponent to use. So this is a key attacking player's friend. In normal middle game books, it might have just mentioned, say, six or seven passive sort of elements. Uh, pawn structure, king safety, material balance, and it might have mentioned the two bishops, but this attacking player's friend is a bishop which the opponent basically hasn't got. So if we go on now, we see that after bishop c4, it's already pointing at f7, making its presence felt. Black tries to defend shields against that with knight f6 but now queen b3 we see the bishop again being used with the queen now in a battery and also hitting b7 here now the players of black played queen e7 they didn't parry this but they knew that if taking they could play this check and that would be annoying to morphe he wanted to watch the opera game he didn't want an exchange of queens he actually played actually knight c3 creating rapid development. And also there's congestion issues here. How is black going to develop? So now they do decide to protect this pawn. Maybe glad that they can protect that pawn from the side. Bishop g5, pinning the knight. b5. And here, 
Morphe uses another attacking player's friend, a series of forcing moves, which make sure that there's very limited choices for the opponent. Can you see what White plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, knight takes b5 was played. Yep, after c takes, bishop takes b5 check. We have another attacking player's friend here, the pin element. The pin means actually this is kind of a spectator piece. It's not really guarding key squares anymore. Its power is illusionary. Not there. <laughs> These key squares, it's not really defending that much. And white exerts even more pressure now on the d7 knight with casting queenside. So trying to torture the pin, which is another major method of the attacking player, to actually put more and more pressure on a pin, you get more and more benefits sometimes because the opponent could just collapse. Overwhelming force. Rook d8 trying to defend the pin. But now, can you see what white plays? If I give you five seconds, starting from now. Okay, rook takes d7, diminishing black's defensive resources here. We have rook takes d7, and now building up pressure with rook d1. Queen e6 is played, but now there's a beautiful forcing combination, which is a major attacking player's friend. You might have these great positions, but you really need to know how to finish them off. And sometimes combinations involving forcing moves other way to do that. White's first move is bishop takes d7. Check. And after knight takes d7, can you see the fantastic finale of this iconic game? White's play here, what would you play in this position? Okay. Get ready. I hope you spotted it. Spend more time if you haven't. Okay, queen b8 check, a beautiful queen sacrifice. After knight takes b8, rook d8 checkmate. A wonderful iconic game, Paul Morphy's opera game. Now, there are six conclusions you can draw from this game. The first one, which I've tried to highlight, is the, the light square bishop we had earlier from the opening. It was a counterpart which was a terrible weapon creating nasty pins and probing weaknesses generally. Two, celebrating the pin is an effective attacking player's method. Black had spectator pieces which are still evident in the final position. These pieces never moved. So that's the third conclusion, the spectator pieces. Four, White was able to mobilize his attacking pieces very quickly. And actually made use of them all. I mean, there's no spare pieces here. It's just the bishop and rook left in the final position. Now, six. Yeah, it just shows White was acutely aware of forcing moves and even outrageous ones. So he was able to easily finish off the opponent from a superior position. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. So this was getting an attacking position out of the opening and introducing you to some of what I consider the attacking player's friends to be aware of. Friends help you and you need to be able to have a good awareness of these techniques that were illustrated in this iconic game. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this particular lesson. Thanks very much.